shuttle Discovery. It's a go for landing. It's going to be touching down just a few minutes from now at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We are tracking it for you. We should be able to see it pretty soon, right, John? Yeah, and if you folks in uh, St. Augustine, Jacksonville, Florida, you may be able to look skyward and catch a picture of the shuttle, even with the naked eye, as it, uh, as it flies overhead. It's already been over Topeka, Kansas, Memphis, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Columbus, Georgia. You folks hope you got out there to see it. You might even hear it. Uh, as the atmosphere gets thicker and, uh, and it flies along at supersonic speeds, you might hear those twin sonic booms, both the nose and the tail ah, of the shuttle. Information there it the is. Data probes on uh, the left and right sides let's of take a listen to nose are being incorporated into the guidance and navigation control computers using the atmospheric pressure data in the airspeed. The nose and the tail of the shuttle make uh, shock waves, each of which creates a sonic boom. So you hear this bam, bam, as the thing flies overhead once it gets into the thicker part of the atmosphere. Six and a half minutes to touchdown. The ground tracking station showing the spatial discovery flying at an altitude of 81,000 feet, flying at 1,600 miles per hour. Six and a half minutes, as she said there. Tom Jones is with us. Uh, he knows what this feels like. Tom, what's going through their minds after what was pre a pretty stressful mission? I think one thing they saw in this spectacular trip across the country today, Jane, was the fact that they could look down and see the contrails of jetliners going just yeah. below the speed of sound, and they were going Mach 10, and they were overhauling <laughs> these babies like uh, coming up from behind a NASCAR race. So it was really a tremendous feeling of speed as they came in. That's got to be a blast, right? Well, it gives you the, the first real sense of the, the tremendous speed that you have to get rid of to come in for a landing, and it makes your eyes get wide. What is the speed right now? We're about six minutes away from landing. What are, what are they doing? Just below Mach 2, uh, John, and as you know, they have to slow down to about 300 miles an hour for final approach. So the shuttle is about to start its right-hand turn down to the actual landing runway. Pam Melroy will be taking over manual control in just a minute or so. And the commander, Tom, had said that the daylight landing, they, they switched to this. She called it safer and easier. Uh, I guess some of those reasons might be obvious, but what are the ones we might not be thinking of? Well, John's a pilot, I know, and, and perhaps, Jane, you are too. When you come in on a daytime landing, you've got a lot of visual cues outside the cockpit to tell you where the horizon is and whether your wings are level. You can sense the attitude of the airplane a lot more easily than relying on instruments during a night landing. It's falling a little bit like a uh, very fast rock right now. I mean, those stubby wings on the shuttle don't exactly give it the lift that a jetliner might enjoy, huh? Now, the glide ratio is only about five to one. So they're uh, moving five feet forward and then dropping a foot at, at that same time. And so that's much steeper by about a factor of uh, seven than a conventional airliner coming in for a final approach. Okay, just about five minutes to landing. Let's take a listen again to NASA. Well, NASA doesn't have much to say, but Tom, um, it was it was uh, when Columbia broke apart. It was already uh, much earlier in the process. The fact that we can see the shuttle. Four minutes to touchdown. Commander Penn Melroy has taken over the flight of the space shuttle Discovery, flying at 600 miles per hour at an altitude of 44,000 feet. All right, so still still at about Mach one. The fact that uh, we can see the shuttle, she's intact. Everything looks good. I think there must be an awful lot of people breathing a sigh of relief at NASA right now, right, Tom? Oh, including the people in the cockpit, John, because uh, the, they're through the peak heating. That was about 15 minutes ago. And now they're just making this airplane do what it has to do to get them all back on the ground. The shuttle right now is shaking like a bus going down a dirt road. It's uh, vibrating pretty stiffly because of the, the bumps and knobs all over the outside of this non-streamlined airplane. And I'm being told that was one of the sonic booms, Tom. Did, were you able to hear it? I did hear that crack, and that would have been the announcement to the people there at the landing runway, like Phil Keating, uh, hearing that arrival of the shuttle overhead. Yeah, Phil, uh, can you hear us? And I assume you could hear yeah. that. Oh, yeah, it was great. It was a boom, boom. It was everybody applauded who was here because that's certainly one of the big symbolic notes of uh, to touch audible down, intensity that the shuttle is really coming close. Circle. We've been watching it for the past minute up above our heads. It's doing the big sweeping, sweeping right turn now to then come in and approach this 15,000 foot long runway from the south. Northbound headwind, blue skies, everything looking great for Discovery. Yeah, let's take a listen. Less than three minutes now.
pilot George Zamka continuing the flight of the Space Shuttle Discovery around the heading alignment circle. Discovery Houston on at the 90. Copy on at the 90. Two minutes to touch down this view from the heading, the heads up display. As Commander Pam Mulroy continuing now to fly around the heading alignment cylinder. Houston Discovery, okay. runway in sight. Thanks. Copy, field in sight. Discovery flying at 390 miles per hour at an altitude of 11,000 feet. You. One and a half minutes to touch down. He's descending toward the runway at the correct rate and is lined up with the center of the runway, flying at 370 miles per hour at an altitude of 7,000 feet. One minute to touchdown. Discovery's descent rate is 20 times higher and 7 times steeper than a commercial airliner on the final approach. That's a great shot. Discovery's landing gear is down and locked in place. Main gear touchdown. Touchdown. Discovery is rolling out on runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center, wrapping up a 6.25 million mile mission. Discovery completing its 34th mission to space and the 23rd shuttle flight to the International Space Station. Discovery, congratulations on a tremendous mission and a great landing, Pam. And we'll meet you on page 5-3 with no deltas. Copy all. That was the voice of uh, Mission Commander Pam Melroy. She will now tell the rest of her crew to leave their baggage in the overhead compartment until it has pulled up to the uh, concourse. Home sweet home. Like, man, you can watch one of those every day, right? I, cool. You know, this nation, uh, those shuttle landings become a little bit routine despite all of the drama, but uh, this nation is the only one on the face of the earth that can put a, a machine like that in space and bring it back safely. We should all take a great deal of pride in yeah, what we just saw. Sure. That, uh, that is just so exciting. Tom, never routine to somebody on board, right? Final comment from you? Well, I think the crew is tremendously satisfied being back on the ground. And after pulling off that amazing repair last week, there are going to be more challenges like this ahead. But I think these, these folks set the standard pretty high for following missions. That is for sure. Tom Jones, as always, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks to our Phil Keating as well.